In today's show, I'm going to show you how to choke something two different ways. Actually, it's artichokes, and it's done either surf or turf. We're going to do some halibut, and we're going to do some lamb. And what I love about this artichoke recipe is, is that it's a master technique. I'm going to show you one way to cook an artichoke, and you're going to be able to use it in a handful of different ways. So don't go anywhere. Michael Chiarella's Napa is funded by Sunkist. Fresh citrus taste. Cooking with Sunkist throughout the day. Sunkist. Our promise. Your inspiration. By Salton. Innovative products for a healthy today and tomorrow. Bringing you the Juice Man juice extractors designed from the Salton family. Providing products to help people make choices for healthier living. By All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is functional design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. And by Wolf, makers of ovens, cooktops, and ranges to fuel a passion for cooking. You know, it's winter time in the Napa Valley, and I tend to relax a little bit when I'm cooking. Artichokes are one of those dishes that take a little bit of time to do, so pour yourself a glass of wine. The doctor's got me down to about one glass a day. Mmm, fantastic. Now, cleaning artichokes, I think we get scared about artichokes. Artichokes are late spring in a, in, a, in, a, in a winter vegetable, so when it's cold outside, you need to be thinking about artichokes. What I love about them in this technique is that they're gonna be able to be done ahead. You can have them in the fridge, they last for a couple of weeks. When you're cleaning an artichoke, no matter what you're doing, you pull the leaves off. The leaves at the bottom are gonna be tough. And then we bend them over our finger. And I continue to do this until I see that the leaves underneath are beginning to get lightened. Okay, we're gonna cut this down now. I like the stem. The stem, tells me where I, where I need to cut it. If you look right in here, right, you can see the dark green spot is what I want to cut away, and that tender spot in the middle is fantastic. So use a paring knife, go straight down, bend it back, and again, you turn the artichoke, you don't turn your knife. Okay, so we're gonna cut these right about there. Now artichokes oxidize, so you want to work quickly, okay? Here's the choke. There's the art. There's the choke right there. You can take, take a spoon and just dig right in there, right, and just pull it back. And the spoon goes in. All right. Now we're going to quarter these one more time. There we go. There's some that are already done. Really simple dish to do. I love these all by themselves. Okay. So we're going to take some garlic. Here they are. We can slice them. You can leave them whole. I don't, again, I really don't care. This is what you do. Garlic goes in. Extra virgin olive oil. Now this is part of the sauce. You want these artichokes to really braise. This is almost like a confit of artichokes. So they need lots of olive oil. In the meantime, we're going to pick some thyme. And we're going to just take the leaves off this thyme and chop it up a little bit. Now, if you look closely at this thyme, you can see that it's wintertime thyme. You see how small it is? It hasn't grown that much. It's going to be very strong in flavor. All we're going to do is pull them off straight down here, pull them towards you. Any big stems you can throw away. Okay, so, ooh, there's a little branch. You don't want to bruise your herbs. All you want to do is just release them. Cut them once, straight through, very deliberately, and boom, time goes in. Some lemon juice, 
I have a Meyer lemon here. You see the color of this? Look at that. Is that incredible? These actually are sweet enough to eat just by themselves. Now, when I'm cooking at home, I go like this. The lemon goes in. They all braise together. Now, I'm going to put more lemon juice in here than you think because it's really going to braise together and the lemon juice is going to reduce and I want that tartness in here. I really, really do. Okay, plenty of salt. Good twist of black pepper. A couple bay leaves. Now here's some bay leaves from, from my yard here. Grow bay. I mean, it's really no big deal. I mean, we keep these little jars of bay leaves in our cupboard forever. They grow like a weed. They are really easy. Now, these go like this. We're going to go right into a pan. And we're going to put these in the oven. But when you put things right in the oven, it takes I don't know how many minutes for something to get up to a simmer in an oven when you just put a pan in dry. So what I tend to do is bring things up to a simmer. So these go in uncovered. I really want the dehydration inside the pan. I want the flavors to concentrate. I want everything to kind of cook in and around these artichokes. So once this comes to a simmer, we'll go right into the oven. Oh, those are perfect. See what I'm talking about? All of the flavors concentrated. The artichokes shrunken down. They're really intense. Now as an antipasto, just like this, a little piece of pecorino, a bruschetta, a glass of vino bianco, and you're going to be a hero. So don't be afraid to make a big batch of these and leave them in the fridge. Okay, now to start, for this halibut dish we're going to do, we're going to take some of these. We're going to make a little salad out of it. And the rest we're going to reserve for a lamb dish. All right, so those go there. Well, those are cooling a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get my halibut. Now, wherever you live, whatever fish you eat, whatever, I mean, for us, we took the artichokes from down by Salinas, right, which is south of San Francisco, if you don't know California. North of San Francisco, our, our sister county, Sonoma, the other wine country, is right next to the coast. We got some halibut, and that was fantastic. We came inland to Sonoma on our way back home, and we picked up some baby lamb. So these, are, these are really simple. You take a saute pan, you get it hot, a little bit of olive oil on this fish on both sides. All right. Salt. A little bit of black pepper. You know, people use white pepper with fish. And, you know, when I was uh, working in French restaurants, they'd always say, oh, no, you use uh, bois blanc for fish. Black pepper looks like ants. But you know what? <laughs> I'd rather have the flavor. White pepper to me is just a little too hot. It's just not right. Okay. You see the skin side right here on the fish? We want that to be down because we don't want to see that. That's not the presentation side. So we're going to put the other side down first. Whatever you put first in the pan is going to caramelize much, much better. Pan's hot. See that? Saute means to jump in the pan. If your food doesn't jump, you have a little bit of a problem. OK? Now, my pan's good and hot. I can turn it down a little bit. Now, you have to judge your own stove at home. I have a, I have a beautiful stove. I have plenty of BTUs. So if you're working on an electric range, you want to maybe leave it on high a little bit longer. The recovery time on some stoves isn't always the same. OK, we want a nice little skin. So while those are searing, I'm going to wait. I'm going to get some really good caramelization. Because my fish isn't that thick, I'm going to cook it longer on one side than the other and get some really deep color here. Now while that's going on, I'm going to finish my salad. I'm going to take some of these red onions. Now what I do with red onions is I bloom them a little bit. A red onion by itself is a little too crudo to me. What the acid seems to do is it just, not only does it change the color a little bit, but it just sweetens them up just enough to be able to eat in a raw salad like this. In they go. We have a few Kalamata olives. Again, any olives that you like. Now you see I'm listening to my fish. 
I can still hear it sizzling and cracking a lot. That means there's plenty of moisture. I don't need to worry about it. Olives go in. I have some Italian parsley leaves that we've just picked. We use parsley a lot as a, like a salad ingredient where you mix it in and it's got plenty and it works like a little insalatina. Mix these together. Now you don't want to do this that far ahead at all because the acid's going to kind of make everything cook together, turn the parsley color. I like the freshness of this. This is a dish that you do when springtime's just around the corner. You're looking for a deep enough flavor from the artichoke. It's like a shoulder season, right? You got, you got one foot in winter and you got one foot in spring. And I love that the deep flavor of the artichoke and the freshness of everything else. All right. Fish is almost done. Spatula. When you're turning fish, pay attention to what you're doing. People get so scared when they're cooking. And don't be scared, right? The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to burn yourself, right? That's the worst thing. If you're scared, for sure you're going to burn yourself. Take the fish. Tip the pan over. If there's no oil for it to splatter on, it's not going to hit you. Turn the fish over. Oh, look at that. Same thing this way. Turn the pan the other way. And that goes over. All right. You take a pair of Italian tongs, it's a spoon and a hand, and you make yourself a little, one little salad here. And another little salad there. I don't know, I'd be a pretty happy camper if somebody served this when I got home from work. That's the problem with being a chef. You know, nobody invites you over to eat. Sometimes I get invited over to eat. <laughs> and they end up having all the ingredients out like this. Well, what we were thinking is maybe a little halibut with an artichoke. Maybe you can help us <laughs> so we don't get that many invites. Fish is perfect. If you're worried about all the fat and everything, you know, you can take it and pat, pat them dry a little bit. But I think these are great, as they are. I love, love, love that crispy hot up against the tartness of the, of the dressing and the richness of that artichoke. I don't know about you guys, but if I was at a restaurant, that'd be an entree for $21.95. You know, I live in a great part of the country. What we don't have here in Napa, we find right over the mountains in Sonoma County, from great seafood at the ocean to super wines and livestock inland. I stopped in in Dry Creek Valley in Sonoma County to visit with a fellow Zinfandel maker, the brilliant Dave Raffinelli. Um, my grandfather came over in 1903 um, from Tuscany, and um, they became interested in Sonoma County and Dry Creek Valley especially uh, in the early teens and, and purchased some property at that time. My dad got very involved when he was very young and um, learned from my grandfather as I learned from my father and went um, off to college, came back and have been making wine for the past 30 some years here under the A. Raffinelli label and now my daughter who's been the winemaker for the last few years is fourth generation. You know, certainly I'm biased uh, growing up in Sonoma County. We love Sonoma County. However, I admire Napa County and, and all that they've done and the history that they've established for itself and the few old wineries that establish the, the reputation. And I think Sonoma County in general has more viticultural areas that are are well-defined and have certain microclimates. You have the Green Valley, the Russian River Valley, the Sonoma Valley, the Alexander Dry Creek Valleys, and they all have unique soils and unique climates. But certainly, I love to go to Napa Valley and, and, um, and try their wines. They, they have an excellent record, and, and uh, I think Sonoma and Napa complement each other. Now we're off to visit Bruce Campbell. This guy raises some of the best lamb I have ever tasted. Sonoma County lamb is, uh, the reputation was built on the fact that from March until the 1st of June, the grass that grows here in Sonoma County is just better than any grain you could ever buy. Consequently, when the lambs were born around Christmas time, by now, they're getting ready to go. And they're very, very young, and they've been on nothing but grass and mother's milk, and they're tender, and the fat is uh, 
as good as lamb fat gets. Napa, Napa Valley does re, uh, rely on Sonoma County for its different ingredients for its chefs, the, the, uh, the meats, the duck, the produce, the seafood. I think it's important for Sonoma County to maintain enough food so the people in Napa don't go hungry or have to eat imported stuff. Now that we know how to make artichokes that taste this fantastic, we're gonna move on to our lamb, all right? Saute pan comes over. Grab the lamb from the fridge. What I love about these is they're like lamb lollipops, right? You don't even need silverware to eat this dish because you, you have a fork right here. You got a little handle for them. Now the lamb, you can season however you'd like. I'm gonna season my meat first and I'm gonna give it a quick flouring. Again, if you're seasoning things, season them deliberately and on both sides. Press the salt in so it gets into the meat. Give them a little dusting like that. You don't wanna do these ahead. People always say, oh, can I flour them ahead like this is such a big deal. No, no, you can't flour them ahead because it'll get gummy on there. Then you'll put more flour and then it'll for sure not taste great. All right, we just want to do this right before we go on. Mmm, look at that. Okay, pan's good and hot. You can hear a pan when they're really hot. You hold it up to your ear, not too close, and it goes When I know my pan's hot, I'm going to put my olive oil in the corner so it doesn't spontaneously combust if it's too hot. That's perfect. Again, we set those in deliberately. We're gonna leave them alone so they get really good and caramelized. We'll give them about a minute and a half on this side. We'll turn them over for another minute and a half and we'll pull them off and let them rest. All right, if you come in and you look really closely here, you'll just begin to see some blood coming up. Now, whenever we're cooking meat, we talk about this, that when the blood begins to come up, and the juices, depending on, you know, if you're freaked out about that word, when they begin to come up to the top, it's a, it's a good time to turn it over. Let's see. Look at that. All right, that is just perfect. Turn these guys over. Now, I'm, I'm gonna cook them only about half as long on this side because they're thin little lollipops. Okay, these guys come off. When you're doing things like this and you're letting them rest, spread them out. Do not stack them on top of themselves. It's like a dog pile. All the, all the juices will squeeze out. Okay, all right, now we're gonna get rid of this lamb fat right here and just pour it out for it to cool. Now we're gonna deglaze the pan. That deglace, that whole process means to get all these bits, see all these bits right there? That's flavor, and we wanna get that flavor up. A little bit of the acid in the white wine is really gonna help with that. So we're gonna, we're gonna pour it off the heat. If you don't pour it off the heat, you risk this, right? For me, that's no big deal. It just flames a little bit. For other people, they freak out, they toss the pan, it goes on the ground, big problem. Before you know it, you're having dinner with a fireman. Okay, now the white wine we wanna reduce down. So take your spatula, get all of the good flavor. Okay, all the good flavor off the bottom. And once it's reduced, we're gonna add a little bit of chicken broth. Now don't worry if you don't have any chicken broth. If all you had was white wine and you were doing this, it would be fine. If you wanted to add a little bit of water, that'd be fine also. But I use a little bit of chicken broth. It's just gonna give this sauce a little bit of viscosity. And this is gonna reduce in half. We're gonna take this out of the pan and go ahead and build our finished sauce. All right, you can tell by the size of the bubbles inside that it's just starting to get a little bit viscous. So that's what I'm doing as a chef when I have other things going on, I'm not just watching the pan to see how it's doing. As I'm over here, I'm doing my thing, and I look over and I say, hmm, bubbles look okay. I think it's time to take it off. All right, so these come off over here. Now, I got out of the restaurant business not too long ago, and I realized that cooking at home can be really laborious. Not the cooking part, mind you, but, the, but all the cleaning that goes with it. And as a chef, 
I was used to having a whole squadron of people around me that were always washing, so now I'm a little more cognizant of it. I take a pan, I give it a wipe, <laughs> and I begin to saute my next ingredient. One less pan that I have to clean. All right, so now we have some hot olive oil, some fresh garlic, and this garlic's going to saute until it gets light brown. As soon as my garlic's light brown, I'm going to add a lot of these whole leaves of Italian parsley right in. That's going to crack in together. Mmm, ah. This is a little sufrito. This, this is a little layer of flavor underneath this sauce. All of these juices go back in. That's going to reduce a little bit, and while that's doing its thing, I'm going to get ready for this finished sauce. A little salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay, all right, that's about there. So now we're going to crack a couple of eggs for this finished sauce. Now this is like that Greek, I don't know, what's that sauce called? Agra, agra something, the Greek egg sauce that they put on lamb. So we're borrowing it a little bit. Take a farm fresh egg. Give them a little bit of a whisk. Season these guys a little bit. Okay. We're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice right inside here. That lemon in this egg mixture is gonna go right in this sauce and the temperature is going to be perfect and it's just going to coagulate enough and you're going to have some tartness of that lemon up against the richness of the lamb. It is just incredible. Okay. So, artichokes, remember them? Here they are. They go into the sauce. Everything goes in with it. All right. These are just simmering really lightly. You pour these in, stir it the entire time. Oh. Just as the egg heats up, it will begin to thicken. A tasting spoon, make sure the salt's right. Oh my God, okay. Now this is just gonna carry over a little bit so that my heat's off. And we're gonna get ready to plate this guy up. Now what I love about these is you can give them a little stack, okay? Doing this one this way, one this way. You wanna expose the meat so when you put the sauce over the top, you're gonna get a little bit of sauce on top of each chop. All right, I love lamb. Ah. Okay. There's my egg sauce, a little artichoke, these on the That way everybody can come, grab a chop, take a spoon, put a little bit of sauce on top, and have a great supper. Oh my, I love that. Thank you to all my Greek friends out there for sharing this little trick with us. All right, so here we have it. We have some halibut on a little insalatina, a little salad of oven braised artichokes, red onions, kalamata olives, and parsley. Lots of parsley to turn it into a wonderful salad. Crispy sauteed halibut on, on top. That whole hot and crispy up against a cool and tart is just an explosion of flavor. Those same artichokes turned into a sauce, a quick sauteed lamb. A little deglaze with some white wine, some eggs to finish, and the artichokes poured over the top. And you have all of this going on, the richness of the lamb, the tartness of the egg sauce. They're just spectacular. So remember, when you're learning dishes and techniques like these, like these oven braised artichokes, by themselves, they're a dish in their own glory. So be sure that you're making a big batch and then begin to experiment a little bit. As you can see with just two dishes here, these are two of probably 100 things you can do with this artichoke dish. The basis for all my food and wine pairing is really simple, to take a like flavor with another like flavor. In the case of this little lamb chop lollipop, we know we love lamb, and we know what we love is the gaminess to it. 
So, mm, if you find a wine that has a little bit of a gamey character to go with it, they'll be fantastic. My choice, being a Zinfandel farmer, is always some old vine Zinfandel, but one of the classic combinations of all time is Pinot Noir. A beautiful glass of Pinot Noir and a lamb chop lollipop. Life's not so bad. Michael Chiarello's Napa is funded by Salton. Innovative products for a healthy today and tomorrow. Bringing you the family of George Foreman's lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. Salton, the secret to indoor grilling. By Sunkist, fresh citrus taste. Cooking with Sunkist throughout the day. Sunkist, our promise, your inspiration. And by Wolf, makers of ovens, cooktops, and ranges to fuel a passion for cooking. And by All Clad Metal Crafters.